as, as you rightly point out, that security is fundamental to how you build cloud and how you consume it. And the evolution of Akamai has been from distribution and CDN into becoming a major security player and has extended that now into cloud. And security permeates everything we do. Hi, this is your host, Bhartia, and we are here at KubeCoin Paris. And today we have with us John Bradshaw, Director of Cloud Computing Technology and Strategy at Akamai. John, it's great to have you on the show. Great to meet you. It's my pleasure to host you here. First of all, tell us, you know, how has been the event so far in the first day? It's been fantastic. I mean, the buzz here is incredible. Um, I don't know if you can, or the audience can hear, but the noise coming off. Yeah, there's some lots of really interesting, fascinating conversations going on. And now if you look at from Akamai's perspective, did you folks make an announcement? Yes, we have, yeah. Um, there's been a couple of things today. One is the uh, upgrade to gold for our membership with uh, CNCF, which is fantastic news. Um, on top of that, there were a few announcements last week. Neural Magic uh, is one of them. And more interest in Gecko, which is our cloud computing at the edge uh, service. Akamai, you know, you folks invented CDN back then, mm -hmm. then acquired Linode, which predates, you know, AWS in a way. So you folks are kind of, it's hard to say whether you stay ahead of the curve or you kind of lay bricks for where we are heading. So when we look at Gecko, what kind of cloud distributed edge work that you envision that you want to prepare for? Our view with Gecko is really edge computing in its truest sense. Most organizations, most service providers have had some form of compute or functions at the edge for a number of years now. And that's great if you've got a discrete thing you want to do. Something comes in, you process it, away it goes. Unfortunately, that's not going to work if you've got a more complex workload. If you need to be doing inferencing at the edge or you, you've got more complex processes that need to occur. And our view is actually to put that full fed edge compute as close to those end users as possible. And that's what Gecko is. It's putting real compute within milliseconds of actual users all over the world. From a Kamai's perspective, are you also working with players to optimize the user experience, whether it's about media encoding, or it's about a lot of other things where we are delivering Gen AI and stuff. So I'm asking about an end user facing question, but yep. from Akamai's perspective. We've got um, partnerships across the industry from um, organizations that develop transcoders through to those that actually render the player at the, uh, at the user's interface. Now you couple that with gaming as a good example. Gaming works by having access to other players, especially if you're in the first person shooter uh, games, which I, I love. You need to be as close to your competitor as possible. If you're in London and your opponent is in Denver, that's not going to be a great experience for both of you. You want to be finding people in and around London, London, Paris, that sort of thing. So yeah, we're, we're bringing all of that access, all of that data as close to that end user as possible to enable new ways of working or new ways of consuming content, media, entertainment. And you're right, we don't necessarily have a direct relationship with the end user, but what we do does power billions and trillions of interactions a day. You folks uh, have been talking a lot about distributed, you know, mm. yeah. edge. So when we look at edge with resource constraint data set closer to user, it has its own challenges. So talk about the unique challenges that edge poses and how Akamai is making it easier. So whether it's operators or whether it's developers, their workflow is not getting interrupted. You're right, the edge means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And um, there is a continuum of edge um, from that IoT device all the way through to a, uh, a data center type construct. And our um, approach is to build core centers. Those are our, our main locations where we have all of the cloud computing facilities. But we've extended that out into our 4,100 points of presence globally. Now we're starting with those first 25 this quarter and we'll be at 75 by the end of the year and then hundreds the year after. And we want to give those users, those developers, access to real compute as close to them and their users as possible. Now you're right, there is a data challenge. How do you or do you even bother bringing stuff back? So as part of that, we see users building workflows at the edge that um, summarize information or execute models to help 
process information at the edge and only transport back what they need to for later processing or, or later action. What are the new exciting use cases of edge that we are seeing? Or if you can get example, because of course people may not know, retail stores in the middle of nowhere, yeah. that could be, they are making a lot of decisions locally, you know, all the purchases. What are some of the use cases which are traditional edge use cases and some new use cases of edge that you are seeing? Well, one of the, the most interesting ones I, I found was, was hyper-personalization for users. We've got an example where a, a customer of ours, a, a retailer, is taking information about their, their user when they visit. So if you land from, on their website from London and it's pouring with rain, it's not going to recommend to you to buy flip-flops and t-shirts. But if you land in South America where it's 30 degrees, it is going to recommend those things. And that's something that we've done with uh, supermarkets for years. You know, if it's a sunny weekend, they buy lots of ice cream or barbecues. No one's ever thought really to extend that to the e-com world where you take the local context of weather and apply it there. So that's a fascinating one that's enabled by edge compute and our ability to help connect customers with their customers. Let's also talk about security because that's also mm -hmm. one of the strengths of, of focus of Akamai as well. How do you see security as we are moving more and more towards the edge? As, as you rightly point out, that security is fundamental to how you build cloud and how you consume it. And the evolution of Akamai has been from distribution and CDN into becoming a major security player and has extended that now into cloud. And security permeates everything we do. It, it, security is, as you expand into the edge, becomes more complex because you've got more endpoints, you've got more edges in which you need to, to protect, but we've got a raft of tools from protecting inbound API calls to outbound internet access to making sure that your workloads are authenticated the right way. We're building those in as part of our core offer, but as the environment expands, as you start to deploy to more locations, it does become more complex. And we're supporting that by releasing in phase three of Gecko, um, orchestration and, and uh, fleet management processes and tools to support that expanded build out. Let's, let's quickly also talk about um, developer experience that we have started talking a lot about it these days. When we move to edge or when we look at the edge, what does it mean for developer experience? Do they have to do th something differently when they're targeting edge? It doesn't matter because the portable cloud native architecture, cloud native infrastructure. It does change the developer environment or experience slightly in the sense that you can start thinking about your workload as a fully distributed application. So instead of consuming a function which might just process one little thing at the edge, you can start replicating bigger um, components, bigger structures out closer to those users for a better experience, faster interaction with the interfaces, more localized processing. So yes, it, it becomes a distributed systems problem, but you end up with a much better, much broader way of solving for it because you can put more compute closer to that user. If you look at Akamai, of course there are a lot of things you cannot talk at this moment, we'll talk about it once those are ready for a press announcement, but just give us a glimpse when you look at Akamai and 2024. So over the next year, or over the next month in fact, we're releasing those 25 Gecko regions. The rest of the year, we're going to add another 75 to that. So we'll have 100 locations all over the world from places like Marseille to Bogota to Denver, um, wherever you can imagine. And, and the, the idea behind it is that we'll grow that over the following years to include as many local areas, local regions where we have an existing point of presence as possible. In the second phase of Gecko, we're going to release a, a managed containers solution. So you can start putting containerized workloads as close to those users. And then in the third phase, as I mentioned earlier, is that we'll put in a fleet management capability to help you scale and manage. Because once you hit that 100 locations where you're running your applications, managing that entire estate becomes a, a really interesting problem that you need to fix. John, thank you so much for taking time out today. Thank you, sir. And a great insight there. Thank you so much. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Brilliant. Great to meet you as well.